Well, hello, folks. Welcome to Chapter 4, Tissues. I want to remind you where we've been. We talked about the hierarchy of life, and we said that atoms were the basic unit of all matter, and we covered atoms in Chapter 2. We said two or more atoms come together to make molecules, and we covered the bonding, the ionic and covalent bonding, in Chapter 2. And then we said that molecules combine to make macromolecules, and we covered that in Chapter 2. And we said there was four biological macromolecules. We said there were lipids, carbs, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and proteins. No particular order, by the way. We said the, the monomers of proteins were amino acids. We said the monomers of nucleic acids were nucleotides. And we said the monomers of carbohydrates were monosaccharides, like glucose. And we also said there were no monomers of lipids. They were actually built differently. Then we covered organelles. These macromolecules come together in different ways, and they make organelles, both membrane and non-membrane bound organelles. And then when all the organelles are encased in a plasma membrane, we have the basic unit of life, or the cell. And we, that was chapter 3. So organelles and cells were chapter 3. Two or more cells that act together are tissues. And that's where we are with this chapter. There's only four primary tissue types. There are epithelial tissues, nervous tissue, connective tissue, and muscular tissue in no particular order. And definitely not the order I'm covering it. So those are the four primary tissue types we'll talk about. In addition, we'll talk about glands because epithelial tissues make up glands. And we will talk about... Um, cell-to-cell -cell junctions so we'll talk about cell-to-cell -cell junctions and we'll talk about the overall architecture of the body which is uh, really dictated by connective tissue and we'll, we'll see that when we talk about uh, deep fascia and superficial fascia okay so let's get started the four primary tissue types are here epithelial tissue connective tissue muscle tissue and neural tissue probably the hardest one is connective tissue probably because it's the most diverse but none of them are really that hard all right let's look at the uh, we're looking at epithelial tissue first and whenever we look at epithelial tissue and this is not th this is always true for epithelial tissue it could be true for, for for some other cells the cells have polarity and what i mean by that is they have these basolateral surfaces down here and down here. It's the bottom of the cell, and they touch a basement membrane. So that's a basement membrane. And that makes this surface up here, which is typically, uh, let me erase that because it cut through cilia, which is, it's typically exposed to a free space, like the lumen of your intestine or the lumen of your trachea. This is called the apical surface. And we name the cells based on the cells that are at the apical surface. Now, that doesn't mean that much to you right now. But when I talk about stratified tissue, stratified epithelial tissue, that means layers and layers and layers, we're not going to name that by what the basal cells look like. We're going to name that by what the apical cells look like. So the apical surface is important. The apical surface is also the surface that could contain cilia, like in your trachea, or microvilli, like in your um, digestive tract. So we can, we'll be looking at cilia and microvilli again, as we did in Chapter 3. And what I want to look at right now are these cell junctions. So this is the polarity of a cell. The cell junctions. There's different types of cell junctions. And the molecules that hold these cell junctions are called cell adhesion molecules, or CAMs. Cell adhesion molecules. And there are some de diseases of having CAMs that, that function incorrectly. There's Derrier's disease, and I wish I could remember how to spell it. Derrier's disease. There's, there's other diseases, too, of the CAMs not functioning correctly. All right, so let's, let's give you a 
rundown on these types of cell junctions. First of all, what I have right here is I have a uh, desmosome or a spot weld. It's not called a spot weld, but that's what it's like. It's one spot where the cells are... Oh, but let me back up a little bit. This picture is a collage showing you all the, uh, all the junctions. Typically, tissues have might have more than one of these, but they don't have all four of these. So they will have an abundant number of, of desmosomes and maybe some gap junctions, but then they won't have tight junctions. Uh, and there's some subcategories of the tight junction that I'll talk about. Or they'll have gap junctions and tight junctions, but not spot desmosomes. So this picture shows you the whole collage. It's not that every tissue has all, all of them. So a spot desmosome or a desmosome is a spot weld. It doesn't seal off the two cells, the space between the two cells. It just adheres them in one spot. And then we have gap junctions. And I want you to look over here at the blow-up picture of the gap junctions. What you can see, which is important of the gap junctions, is it allows molecules in one cell to get to the other. These are important in electrical connections that we see in the body. These are important in the, the cardiac muscle because the heart wants to beat in sinus rhythm. So how do all the cells beat together? And then the answer is gap junctions. Then we have these tight junctions. And these tight junctions, what this picture doesn't do justice for it, really zips the cells together. And it does what it sounds like. It makes a tight junction that doesn't allow anything between the cells and then typically speaking underneath a tight junction we have this adhesion belt with adhesion junctions in between so this is a this is the terminal web right here and it has these adhesion junctions that help the tight junctions be tight that's what they do they help they help the tight junctions be tight so if anything were to be able to slip through the tight junctions, which probably they can't, they would run into this adhesion belt and they wouldn't be able to get through there. So what do tight junctions and adhesion belts do for us? Well, what they do is they set up things like the blood-brain barrier and the blood-testes barrier. That's what they set up. All right, so let's look at these, maybe some of these in some more detail. This is showing you the terminal web underneath the tight junction and it blows up the tight junction and shows you how it's a zippering across the cell and you so you zipper all the way down through there you zipper all the way down through there you got some in reinforce reinforcing zipperings it really seals these two cells together so nothing can fit between them so anything that goes from the apical surface to the basal surface must go through the center of the cell must go through the cytoplasm of the cell all right Let me see. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else. This terminal web here is your cytoskeleton. So we talked about uh, the intermediate filaments, the microfilaments, the microtubules of a cytoskeleton. This terminal web is intermediate filaments and microfilaments. It's not microtubules. Remember, well, I won't, I won't remind you of the entire chapter three, but these are intermediate filaments and microfilaments. They are part of the cytoskeleton. The adhesion junction and the adhesion belt is connected to these to these cytoskeletal elements. The desmosome is just a spot weld. So I know you can't see behind here, but in between the two cells, something can get behind it and get down through there. Not inside the cell, but in between these two cells behind this desmosome. It's not making any particularly good seal. It's just one spot in the cell. You can see that the desmosomes are connected to cytoskeletal elements. These are intermediate filaments. And then we have a hemidesmosome. And why it's called a hemidesmosome, sometimes people call it a half a desmosome, is because it's not cell to cell. It's cell to basement membrane. So this hemidesmosome here is just like a, a desmosome. But instead of connecting cell to cell, it's connecting cell to basement membrane. And if you look at the basement membrane, you see two layers. 
you see the Lamina Lucida. The Lamina Lucida is also known as the clear layer. And you see the Lamina Densa. And the Lamina Densa is known as the dense layer. Well, these two layers of the basement membrane, one is made, the Lamina Lucida is made from the cell itself. The cell secretes these proteins that make up the Lamina Lucida. Whereas the lamina densa is secreted by fibroblast of connective tissue. But altogether, these proteins uh, intercalate with each other. They're combined, and they make up what we call the basement membrane. Every epithelial cell sits on a basement membrane. And my hemidesmosomes are intermediate filaments in this desmosomal plaque, they call it right here, that's connected to the basement membrane. So it holds the cell to the basement membrane, hemidesmosome. This is the collage showing you all of the cell junctions and you'll get these in lecture as well. I mean, I'm sorry, this is lecture. You will get these in lab as well. We'll go through all of these uh, junctions in lab as well, so you'll get it twice. The desmosome is similar in structure to the adherence junction except that intermediate filaments extend into the cytosol of each cell. These junctions help provide stability to tissues and are abundantly found in the epidermis of the skin and between the muscle cells of the heart. Click on the intermediate filaments to continue. The hemidesmosome, or half-desmosome, provides strong attachments between cells and other extracellular materials, such as the basement membrane of epithelial tissues. Hemidesmosomes are most abundant in tissues that undergo constant frictional or abrasive forces. Click on the basement membrane to continue. The gap junction is an open communication channel. Transmembrane proteins, called connexons, join together to create tiny tunnels that form gaps between the adjacent membranes. Gap junctions allow ions and other small molecules to pass freely from one cell to another. Gap junctions also allow electrical impulses to pass rapidly from one cell to another. Gap junctions are particularly abundant in some types of muscle tissue. The tight junction is an area where the plasma membranes of adjacent cells are fused together. These junctions protect underlying tissues from harmful substances by restricting the movement of substances, like hydrochloric acid, in the spaces between cells. Tight junctions are found in tissues lining the surface of organs and body cavities, such as the stomach, intestines, and urinary bladder. Click on the tight junction to continue. All right, that's it, folks. That's your epithelial cell with polarity and the junctions holding them together. But we have not completely covered epithelial tissue yet. It's just that we use the epithelial cell to get you to get you uh, introduced to these cellular junctions. All right, I'll see you in the next section.